Hello, Fellowship. We're the Mortensons, Michael and Christine. Uh, we also have four other children that are not represented uh, here today, but we also have Jonathan, our son that we adopted uh, from Ethiopia um, about four and a half years ago. The story begins with a dream that God gave to Christine 20 years ago. She wanted to adopt overseas. God had just been building a real love for cultures in our all of our family. We'd taken several missions trips, and so I wasn't really pinpointed to one area of the world. Then we got a call from Bethany Christian Agency, and they said, we're opening a field in Ethiopia. Would you have any interest? And it was as if a light bulb went off in me, and I realized that was exactly the place God had planted in my heart years ago. To adopt after having four biological children that were all out of diapers, I thought initially that's crazy, but God has a great sense of humor and he ch touched my heart and gave me a similar heart as Christine. In many places around the world, it's either war or famine or AIDS that has led to this great crisis of, I believe it's 157 million orphans. We found out that Jonathan was actually a, a product of uh, sexual assault. He was born in an African hut with a mud floor. Um, his mother had to uh, cut the umbilical cord. After about eight months of living in just deplorable conditions, she gave him up to the orphanage. We later found out that she volunteered at the orphanage uh, to care for him. So many of our first pictures of Jonathan, we thought were of Jonathan and a nanny, but it was actually Jonathan and his mother. That was probably the most profound moment was she was there and just, I mean, kissed our cheeks and said over and over and over, Amaseganalu, Amaseganalu, which means thank you in Ethiopia. Our hope was that one day Jonathan, we would be able to take Jonathan back to Ethiopia maybe every other year so that he could learn Amharic, so he could get to know his culture, his people, and maybe go back and, and help his people because they're in such devastation there. When we first brought him home, there was no knowledge of any special needs. Other than being, you know, slightly malnourished and underweight, he appeared very normal. And um, it was over a period of, I would say the first six months that we began to see there was delays and we figured that's normal for an adopted child. But it was probably a year and a half ago that we noticed his feet were turning in more and his gait was becoming more unsteady. Um, and the, the speech that he had learned was gone. He wasn't able to say any of the words anymore. And then we started noticing what looked like muscle spasms throughout that summer and they did specific genetic blood testing because his neurologist at that point figured there has to be something else going on because he seems to be just slowly regressing and it took several months but they did come back with the results that he has what is called NCL um, and it's a neurological degenerative disorder and unfortunately his is progressing very quickly which is not what we expected. I think for any parent, they, they imagine that they're going to raise their child until they're 18, and then they'll always be a parent, but they look forward to being grandparents. Or in our case, the dream was that when he's 18, you know, maybe he have a chance to go back to Ethiopia to help his people. Um, and so that was one of the first dreams that we lost. And then the thought was, well, he's going to live with us the rest of his, his life we didn't realize that that may only be a couple years. There were moments that one of my biggest fears was that I had encouraged this dream for my family and my husband, and what it brought about was a lot of sorrow. I questioned that a lot, and I, I thought to myself, is my husband gonna regret following this dream with me? Um, and that, that was hard to process for me, very hard to process. And then to watch my children 
and the pain that they are going through, watching their brother just slowly be taken, it's just it's not something that I understand, and I don't know that I'll ever truly understand why we're having to do this, why I'm having to watch my children suffer, um, all of them, not just Jonathan. And that's, that's the hard moments for me, is, you know, as a mom, I'm supposed to be protecting my kids. And I brought this dream into our life, and I questioned that, you know, was that right for me to do? Um, so that, that's where my, my dark days have been. Um, but what has really kept us going, I think, is the fact that no matter what skill he loses physically, he doesn't lose his spirit. I mean, his joy, the joy of the <laughs> Lord is, just flows from this kid on a daily basis. And he, everyone he comes in contact with, he just touches deeply. And that, that spirit has never left him. And that I am eternally grateful for that, you know, God has given us that gift. Um, he's given our children that gift, that his personality is still there and that his joy is still there and he loves his siblings and lights up when they come around. And, and that's, that's our prayer that that part just doesn't go away. What this precious little fella has brought to our lives and enhanced our love and the depth of that love, I wouldn't trade at all. We don't know his time here on earth and and we had to process all of that and change our thinking and allow God to heal our hearts in ways that needed healed so that we can love him and make every moment he does have beautiful.